So Jason, why don't you get started and tell us how you went from mowing into weed control and fertilizer. He, we were talking earlier, should you call it weed control and fertilization or fertilization weed control? I can't remember what I told you. I, th I think I call it fertilization and weed control, but I, I don't know. It's the same thing. Get them. I don't think there's the right way to do it. Um, first of all, I want to, you know, Jobber is is really been great to me and great to work with so i want to thank them for this opportunity and I, when you're around lawn care people at least in the south you know if you meet lawn care guy at the gas station what do they do they walk around they complain about how hot it is you know i can't believe how hot it is and then they complain about not being able to get good employees they like it i can't find no good help and that's bad grammar but that's what he said can't find no good help man it sure is hot out here and that's all they talk about. And so when I'm around these Java people, they're all so happy and positive. It's a great change from what I'm normally seeing with the local lawn care guys. So I'm excited to you know, be working with them. <clears throat> I do have a few notes written on a piece of paper in case I lose my train of thought. But let me start. I share a story with you. I like sports and you know that sort of thing. And we, a few... Uh, a few weeks ago, we, I read a story that caught me off guard. There was a fan of the New York Knicks, and he sold his fanhood on eBay for $3,500. He was so fed up with the Knicks and how pathetic they are that he sold it to the highest bidder on eBay, and he said that he would never go to another Knicks game. He burned his jerseys, and whoever won the bid could name, you know, which team he's going to pull for. So he, some guy in California bought it. He's now a Lakers fan. You got $3,500. The reason I say that is because for these lawn care guys, when I start talking about weed control and fertilization, and that's how I say it, weed control and fertilization, I've heard, um, they, they get so worked up about having to sell their lawn mowers, and they get so nervous that I'm going to tell them, you got to sell your lawn mowers and start doing weed control. And I'm not, so what I'm saying is, just like I'm not going to ask you to sell your fanhood, okay, I'm an Alabama fan, I'm not, you're not going to sell my Alabama fanhood, especially if not no $3,500. But, um, you know, people are so attached to their mowing business because that's their bread and butter. That's what they do to make a living. And they're not going to give that up. So I'm not going to tell you to give it up. You can, do, you can do both if you want to. If you decide to give it up later, that's up to you. All right, so let me tell you how it worked for me. I started mowing lawns about uh, 11 years ago. Okay, I was living in Montgomery, Alabama. I decided I want to have a business, so I started mowing lawns. And I didn't have any business experience, not much lawn mowing experience. But, you know, I do like you guys do. I read on the Internet. I don't think I watch YouTube, and maybe YouTube was existed back then but anyway i'd start and have my business and five years into the business i sold it i had somebody approach me about buying my business and so i said okay yep you can you can have it so i sold the business i kept a small portion of it and had this non-compete agreement and that sort of thing and so i i kept uh, a little bit of the business and did that for another couple years and then we decided to relocate to a new city so i sold uh, the second business and then i moved and when I moved, I had a, a connection with a guy who had been doing weed control and fertilization, and he had gotten out of it. And I talked to him. He had like 30 years' experience. And I said, hey, I'm thinking about, you know, I'm starting another lawn business. I'm going to cut grass. I'm going to mow. But I'm thinking about also kind of getting into the weed control. And he said, I, you know, I'll help you. He's been doing it forever and that sort of thing. So that was really key to have somebody willing to help me. But that's kind of my story. But I want to talk about some of the pros and cons of, let's, let's compare and contrast here. Like if you're doing weed control and fertilization, you're doing mowing. Because uh, one advantage you're going to have, you if you're, let me just ask you this. How many of y'all are, are mowing right now? Okay. You're all mowing. How many of y'all are doing weed control right now? Okay. So some of you are doing both. Some of you may have a, uh, you know, put it on your radar that you might do weed control later on. But... The, 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 what will help you is if you're already doing mowing, a lot of the business skills, which in my opinion is what ultimately makes people successful usually in lawn care is the business side of it. You've got the business skills already. That translates over. How do I go get customers? How do I market my business? What kind of customer service do I provide? And you've already got an existing customer base that you can bring over to the weed control. It's a lot easier to sell somebody that's already an existing customer base. So you, you're not starting from from nothing so that that helps the second thing I want to talk about is you know the when I talk about the pros and cons just comparing them you've got 
um, I, I compare it to like a, a garbage truck service. Okay, now this may sound a little bit different, but when, when one city I lived in, we had the garbage truck. You got the driver. He's got two guys on the back of the truck, and they the one guy drives. He jumps off the truck. I mean, he parks the truck. Two guys jump off. They grab the garbage cans, and I'm thinking, I don't know if that's the best way because where I live now, they got one guy driving the truck. He's got a fancier truck. He pulls up. The truck grabs the can, dumps it in there, and it's gone. One guy versus three guys, and I'm telling you, in lawn care, I don't care what kind of lawn care you're doing labor is one of your biggest expenses so one of the biggest differences you're going to find in weed control versus mowing is the labor costs go way down because one person can generate the same amount of revenue that three people can generate in mowing so i'm saying roughly a thousand dollars a day revenue when you're doing weed control and fertilization is a is a normal day okay that's not like crazy yeah that's just what normal weed control technicians out there and they had a full day and they generated a thousand dollars now that's not all profit but you know it's hard to for one guy to go out there and make a thousand dollars mowing grass I've, I've done it so the numbers are different um, but I think where you're, you're gonna make up on that labor side you know is cheaper on the weed control but you got the and the equipment is cheaper to be honest with you, you got a spray tank spray tanks are not cheap but Zero turn mowers are not cheap. The, the amount of maintenance that it requires to keep up the equipment is significantly less because I got this tank, I got a little Honda engine, it cranks every time, nothing tears up. I do like 10 minutes maintenance a month, maybe, you know, where so there's no sharpening blades, all that stuff that, you know, is, is not bad, but you don't make money by sharpening your blades and greasing your mower and all that. It's just one of those things you have to do to make money later on. So, uh, but so on your poison now the difference is for the weed control side you do have the chemical cost so you've got you know you're spraying herbicides you're using fertilizers those things are not cheap so you're looking at 20 to 25 percent of your revenue is probably going to go to the products that you're putting on the ground so but when you calculate all that up me personally I'd rather spend 20 to 25 percent on this product than the amount that it's gonna cost on labor for the mowing side. It, at the end of the year, when you, when you come down to the bottom line, which is really the only line I usually care about, it's usually the profit margins are better in weed control and fertilization. I don't know anybody that's done both that argues that point. So let's see what else I gotta talk about. Um, so practical steps here. So here's what you need to do. If you're gonna, if this is on your radar, like I said, you don't have to quit mowing, you don't have to do any of that, but if, if you say, you know, this is something that's intrigued me, maybe this year I wanna try to, you know, make the jump into weed control, not give up mowing, or maybe down the road, there's a few practical things you need to do. One, you need to find out how you need to get licensed in your area, in your state, okay? For in, in Alabama, it's not, crazy hard you take a test you pay money you know you call the Department of Agriculture they send you a study guide you take a test you get licensed and then you have continuing education points to keep up every three years I know that's how it works in a lot of states some states the requirements are more difficult that's not necessarily a bad thing from what I've heard let me give you an example like Mississippi Florida they have stricter requirements but from what I hear the people who because the requirements are stricter when you get past those requirements, you've got less competition than even than we do. You know, does everybody know how much competition there are mowing grass? I mean, there's a lot of competition. There's far less competition doing weed control. And in these other states where there's more requirements, there's even less competition. So the ones doing it are racking up because they don't have the competition. And I know that I've done both. I have an easier time gaining customers doing weed control because I'm not competing as against near as many people. I mean, I gain, you know, I gain 100 customers a year in a small town doing nothing, you know, that no advertising, just kind of being around. I mean, I'm on the internet and that sort of thing, but I'm just saying it, there, there's not as many uh, competitors, so it makes it easier. So you need to find out how to get licensed. You need to find a mentor. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that term because you can't just, I'm not going to say can't, but it's going to be quite difficult for you just to read on the internet or go buy some products and say, okay, this says here on, on, on 
March, I'm supposed to put this weed and feed I bought at the big box store on the ground, and I won't have any weeds next year. It, it's not, it is a little more complicated, and again, I look at that as a good thing. You're keeping the competition out because they're intimidated by the learning curve. And a lot of people get confused. They think, I'm, I'm having to get this license so that I can buy these certain products. That is true in some cases, but most of the time, any homeowner can go buy the vast majority of the same stuff that I'm using on their lawn. It's not about what, getting a license so that you can go buy it. They're paying you because you actually know how to use what you went and bought. You know, they're paying you for your knowledge and you have the equipment and they're paying you for results, not some special license to purchase some special product that they couldn't get. So if you find somebody who is in your area who can help train you, I say your area, weeds and grass types are regional, okay? When people call me and they say, I live in Oregon and I have this weed, I live in Alabama, and I say, I've never seen that weed in my life and I don't know what it is, or I sure don't know how to get rid of it. You know, so you need to find somebody, at least if you're in a warm season grass area, like I was talking with Matt over here, he lives in North Carolina, but he deals with the same grass types that I deal with, centipede, Bermuda, Zoysia, St. Augustine. So we can have a conversation about grasses, but you got somebody with cool season grasses, you need to find somebody who understands cool season grasses because it's night and day different on how to approach that. Um, so finding a mentor, you know, for me, like I said, I, ha I had somebody, and, and ultimately, really, they need to just tell you what to do and when to do it at the beginning, okay? So my guy, he says, okay, we're going to do a six-step program. Here's step one. January and February, you're going to apply these products at this rate. March and April, you're going to apply these products at this rate. May, you're going to put out this fertilizer at this rate. You know, I don't understand what I'm doing. I mean, I got my license. You know, I'm reading all these foreign names that I can't half pronounce. But I just needed somebody to tell me what to do, and eventually it starts making sense why I'm putting down what I'm putting down at this given time. And, and then I, what happens is you think, I can't learn all these different weeds. There's so many weeds. I can, you know, it's just too intimidating. Well, if you spray the whole yard, and you see all these weeds died except for this one weed. I keep seeing this same weed in everybody's yard. Well, what happens? You're going to learn the name of that weed, and you're going to figure out what it's called, and you're going to know what you got to do to get rid of that weed. And so that's how it works. You, if I see, I've got 20 weeds in my mind that I have seen thousands of times over and over and over. You know, I can spot nut sedge all the way across that room. I mean, because I've seen it forever, you know, and I know how to get, you know, I can attempt to get rid of it. It's hard to get rid of, to be honest with you. Um, so find a mentor, get licensed, and then you know you need help with the pricing and things like this. In my opinion, the pricing for weed control and fertilization is usually higher. I mean, to be honest with you, a yard that might take me 30 minutes to do by myself, let's say you're able to charge 45 or $50 or whatever. Well, I might can charge you know, $50 for that same lawn and it literally took me five minutes. But again, we're not working by the hour here, okay? We're work the customer is paying you for results on their property and nobody comes out and says, what, well, you know, how much are you charging me per hour? You know, it's not about that. They, and they don't care. They, because you're only coming so many times a year where you're mowing grass, you know, every week or every other week. Uh, sometimes the money comes in, but if you're only doing six, seven, eight applications a year, people don't get as worked up over what the cost is. Now, the downside is you're doing six, seven, eight applications a year, you got to have a lot of customers to make it work. And this is one of the biggest challenges of going full time in weed control and fertilization, and maybe why, if you're already mowing, you need to keep mowing to supplement your income. When I started doing weed control and fertilization, I had zero customers. And I started mowing too because I needed just to make an income. You know, I moved to a new town, I had literally no customers. So I'm mowing grass. It took me three years to fill up my schedule to where I didn't have gaps between, you know, time off when I was working. So, and that took about 400 customers. So, you know, it took me like three years to get 400 customers. Finally, I got a full route. But the difference is where in mowing, I'd work eight, nine months out of the year. The winter time, I'm, you know, playing around, trying to clean up leaves. Maybe I got some commercial contracts, but my income took a huge dip 
now, at least in the south, I know, you know, if you live up north, you got snow all over the ground. It's a different ball game. But for us, there is no variation in my income. 12 months out of the year, you know, it's the same. Now, I don't get as many vacation days in the wintertime, and that's, you know, a negative, I guess. But the income is steady, and I really like that as a business model, being able to keep employees year-round. I don't have to say, well, we don't have any work for you to do this winter. You know, can you come back in March? We don't, we don't do that. I can year-round income, steady work, and that's really good as a business model. Let's see. All right, I'm going to... Uh, the last thing I'm talk about is your uh, couple of things. One, your equipment. If you're going to start off and, and it, you think, well, this is, I want to just dabble in it. To me, it, it is a little bit hard just to kind of dabble in it because you got to get licensed. You got to do continuing education. And if you say, well, I'm going to go get 30 customers. Well, if you're doing 30 customers six times a year, it's not much money. So it's a lot of knowledge and stuff you're trying to gain and you're really not going to make that much money. So to me, it's like, maybe have the goal i'm going to get started maybe i only get 30 customers this year but ultimately if even if i was going to continue mowing my goal would be to establish a full-time weed control truck and a full-time mowing truck now it may take you several years to get there but to me it just doesn't make sense to run out there and say i'm just going to do a few yards in the, on the side it's not it's not enough money in it just to be honest with you so you got to get equipment so if you want to get started you can actually start just with a full granular program you can have a a push spreader and do granular pre-emergence granular fertilizer and have a backpack sprayer doing your weed control that's not an ideal setup but it is a way to get started you know for me i've got a tank sprayer so i'm doing blanket applications with liquid pre-emergence on the lawn and things like that and you're able to mix different products to get your desired result and then using ride on um, spreaders sprayers to actually makes the fertilizer spreader a lot more enjoyable just to be honest with you i like riding instead of pushing but um but it, you know it's more profitable too i'm going to share uh one story in closing i had a friend call me so I, you know i do the youtube thing and and so a guy calls me and he's i must say late 40s this was about three years ago and he called me up he said i'm i've lost my job he'd been had a, a job for like 20 years Lost his job. He wasn't broke. He had a little bit of savings. I think his wife maybe had just retired as a teacher or something. So he wasn't in a desperate situation. But at the same time, he wasn't at a retirement age. He needed something to do. And he wanted to get into weed control and fertilization. He wasn't looking to mow lawns. So he called and said, hey, why don't you come down and ride with me? He lived in Alabama as well. I said, come down, spend a day with me. Roll tight. Let's talk about it and see um, you know, how, it, how it goes. And let's, let's just talk about pricing if this is going to be a fit for you. So he comes down, and we spend the day together. And after the day was over, I thought, this is a, a really nice man, okay? But he's, you know, lawn care, don't be offended by this, but a lot of ways it's kind of a young man's game. You know, a lot of 20-somethings out there doing, you know, it wears on your body. Um, and so he was, you know, in his late 40s. I thought, not that he can't do it. I mean, obviously he could do it. And, but he just, when I left for the day, I thought, he's really nice. But I'm not sure he's got that drive that's going to go out there and start a business from scratch, you know. Well, three years later, fast forward, I was totally wrong on him. He, and he's in small town Alabama, okay. And not not. Not a lot of people there. And he, he told me this year, he said, I'm actually not taking any more customers because he ended up getting another full-time job. His, he had like 300 customers in a few years and had got his second truck going. He got his son involved. And his business just blew up because he had very little competition. He said his one big competitor sold out to another company, and he just wasn't even trying, and the customers were rolling in. And it literally changed his career i mean he got another another job but that the income he was making off of this business was remarkable and he calls me and thanks me and i didn't do you know all he did is come ride with me for a day and we i said here you know look i'm gonna pull the trigger and water's gonna come out on the yard and this is how we do it you know and so it wasn't anything i did but i'm telling you that because of the potential that the business has and how this guy was able with no lawn care experience to because one we connected him with a mentor 
We showed him how you can do it, and then he went by, and he obviously had a lot more business sense than I gave him credit for when I first met him. So um, that's all I have, but I want to take a minute and open up for questions. I know this is, can be an intimidating thing to enter into, but if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Yeah. Yeah, you asked if, if you're worried about the side effects. Obviously, um, you know, you, you want to, the label is the law. That's kind of the, the standard there. So uh, any chemical is going to have, just even if you're using household cleaners, I mean, it's going to have caution statements on it. There's going to be a label that tells you warning. So when you're mixing chemicals, you're using it in a very concentrated form. You want to be even more careful then. But even when you're working, you know, it, it's long sleeves, rubber gloves, rubber boots. Those are kind of standard personal protection. And, you know, you'd be wise to at least do that. But, you know, we have the that the FDA and uh, not FDA is that the wrong uh, EPA is more responsible for those things and you have to kind of trust the labels on those anybody have a question yeah yeah he yeah, asked about pricing um, there's a lot of formulas you can go by I mean sometimes if I'm like Let's just say I'm going to do a, a grub control app and I have no idea what to charge. Well, in that situation, or just some random product that's like unusual, well, I'm probably going to like quadruple the price of the product. But like normally, my normal pricing for my apps is done a little bit different. So I, I have kind of a sliding range that would start from 2,000 square feet. Uh, so like on mowing, because your biggest expense probably is your labor if you have a crew. So it's, it's all, your pricing is heavily based on the time that it's going to take you. Well, in the Weed Control, it, your, your biggest expense, or one of them, is the actual product you're putting on the ground. So it has a lot more to do with the square footage of the property. So you want to get a good measurement, not just for pricing, you also want to get a good measurement because uh, when you go to order product, if I say, you know, I've got to order, how much fertilizer do I need? Well, I don't want to just guess. Uh, it looks like last year I used this many pallets. This year I'm going to order this many. Well, if I know the square footage of all my properties and I've got it entered into a software, then I can generate, you know, a number of how much total square foot I've got, uh, and then I can know how much, what, the, what rate of fertilizer I'm putting out. I know I can get really close on how much fertilizer I need to order. But on your pricing, so I've got a sliding scale based on the square feet. So... It might start at, at 2,000 square foot, which is like basically a garden home. You know, let's say it's $16 per per thousand. So you're looking, I mean, and you can charge more than that. I mean, that some people say that's not enough for a, a minimum. But as you go up, you know, the, the, the scale goes down. So I might, at 30,000 square feet, which is a, a big lawn, you know, you can go down to 5 or $6 per thousand. Depending on the situation, I mean, that might not be profitable for everybody and what chemicals you're applying and what they need, but it's a sliding scale. And I know other people do it different. They'll have like a, they'll say, okay, our, we charge $50 for everything, you know, under this certain size, and then for every thousand square feet above that, we're going to add $5 or something, you know. So there's different ways to do it. Any other questions? He's asking, how would you price it if you're adding multiple products into a, a liquid tank or something? You know, the way we do it, and, and there, again, there's different ways to do things, but if, for me, each application costs the same. So if I'm doing seven applications, let's just say for the sake of argument, it's $50 per application. Well, when I'm putting out a slow-release granular fertilizer, I'm not making that much off of that one. Now, on another application, it might be, you know, a liquid pre-emergent that's fairly cheap, I'm not going to charge the customer $28 this month, $75 one month, $42 the next month. You know, it's the same price, but all of them are not as profitable. Um, so it, it averages out over the year. So I don't, you know, usually those liquid applications where you're doing a pre-emergent, you're mixing in some post-emergent, those are actually quite profitable because most of those products are not that expensive. The granular fertilizer is usually, you know, gets expensive. Give 
get rid of my weeds and leave, or are they want like a full like uh, full on like year package? Yeah, that's a good question. Do, do customers want just I? It would just like for mowing. You know, most people don't want to come in and just do one cut unless it's like the next door neighbor or something. And you got time, you might cut that guy's yard. And as long as they pay you up front, you don't have to go chasing money. But on the weed control, you know, I've had that situation. The neighbor comes down, he's like, "Hey, can you spray my yard too?" Like it's some kind of one. If I spray it one time, it'll be fixed forever. You know. I was like, you know, if you give me some money right now, I mean, the, I, a lot of times I still won't do it because, I mean, legally you got to keep records on what you're spraying, when you're spraying, things like that. It's not just like cutting the grass. So, I mean, I really don't like doing that. I'm not saying I never have, um, but you want to still keep records of that. But I, I, I did have one customer this year, and I don't, he didn't quite understand the program, uh, but he he said, you fixed my yard. You know, I've been working on it for a year or two, pretty much got it looking decent. He said, okay, you fixed it. Now we're done. You know, I was like, I, hold on now. I, I mean, I didn't, there was no talking him out of it. He actually gave me, he said, but I got another house in this other town. Can you go fix that one now? Let's stop this one. I was like, okay, well, you you probably going to call me back about this one in about six months because it's, you know, that's not, anyway, he didn't understand and there was no talking him out of it. <laughs> Yeah, I, well, I charge per application. So if I'm doing seven apps a year, they get an invoice on their door every time, or you email it, they pay with a credit card. Um, so they're, and they, you know, I don't get behind, you know, so if they hadn't paid for this application, I'm not coming back to do another one. So they've got two months to pay, roughly six to eight weeks. Um, but yeah, it's the same price. Some of them prepay at the beginning of the year, and they get a, a discount if I want to do that. But, you know, that's usually how it works. Yeah, well, that, I, that, yeah, we can talk maybe afterwards, but there's di different grass types require different programs. So what you would do on one grass type would not necessarily be the same in and, and, and different areas. So me, what I do in Alabama is not what somebody would do even with a similar grass type, even in South Alabama versus North Alabama. The, the timing is different based on when weeds germinate, when a certain application would be most effective. And like, for instance, um, zoysia grass might be more susceptible to grubs and more needy of a grub control treatment than, uh, you know, a Bermuda lawn or something. Maybe St. Augustine is going to have chinch bug problems, so that is something you want to build into the program. But what you don't want to do is say, somebody says, well, I just want two applications a year. I don't, you know, a lot of times when I found they want a lesser program, they still want the same results. And, you know, I want to do three treatments instead of seven. And then they would call you because they got weeds. She's like, well, you're doing three treatments, you know, it's, it's just not going to work. So I might do that for a friend, but on no, normal people, I don't like doing it. And I just tell them, no callbacks, you know, it is what it is. We're going to, um, he mentioned, I'll just briefly talk about this, but I am, we are hosting the, the Lawn Care Live conference. It's in November 15th and 16th. If you want to be interested in that, it's, it's where I live, north of Birmingham, Alabama. We've got a bunch of speakers coming in, a bunch of great sponsors, including Jobber. A lot of prizes we're giving away. But I would love to host you guys. We'll be going into more detail. It's not just a weed control conference. We're talking about developing business skills and how to make money in the lawn care business, marketing, financial advice, accounting. But we will have a section for those who are interested in weed control. We'll split the group up and say, hey, if you're interested in weed control and you don't know where to start, we're going to help you put together that program like you're talking about, what to spray, when to spray it. We got a cool season guy coming. We got a warm season guy coming. So depending on what your grass type is, and we can help. What, what I like about these events is you're able to make connections with people, get to know people, stay in touch with them. I'm meeting people here that I met last year, and they come talk to me. And But we stay in touch because... You know, you just you can't read a book, read three labels on a product and say, okay, I'm ready for the weed control business. It's it's a it's a it takes years to be honest to get get it down, but we can help you get started and kind of support you as you make that jump. You guys are awesome. Any more questions? I'd be happy to answer it. See me afterwards. Thanks, Jason. We really appreciate it. Uh, check Jason out on YouTube. Give him a follow on Instagram. We just started Instagram, so we need some followers there.